Okay, uh, good morning class. So you guys wrote a test yesterday? Right. So at this point you guys have gotten your, your test back. The test you wrote yesterday. Go for it. Turn around. So let's look at the memo. What would have gotten you those 22 marks? Let's see. Not the Mickey Mouse you guys have written. Eh? Right, this was the uh, class test 3, term 2, May 2022. Yeah. Raad 11. Klas toets. Oh. Drie. Kwartaal. Twee. Die jaar 20. 22. Waar zijn? So what's the name will be proud of me now, no? Huh? The Afrikaans teacher, what's the name? Yes. Right, you got us. Right, people call them A people. As you know, that this comes from previous exam papers. This was last year, uh, June exam, okay? Let's see well, how much of the 22 you would have gotten. Imagine this was your junior exam. <laughs> but anyway, this is how it goes. Tan of x, tan is sine of a cos. The sine of a cos is d. The answer is d. Not so. Cos of negative x. So what I do is I add 360. So it's going to be 360 minus x to the fourth quadrant. Cos is negative. No positive. The answer is A. 1. Now we must see what is equal to 1. We know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is 1. So that makes that G. Negative 10. So that's going to be negative sine x over cos x. Times cos x over 1. That cancels. Give you negative sine x. It gives an answer to be B. Number 5. Sine x, sine 90 plus x, that takes you into the second one. Many of you got this one wrong, surprising me. 90 plus is in the second one. Is sine positive or negative in this one? Although it changes to cos. So the answer is A. Many of you are out there, C. Cos squared. X, we know that cos squared x equal to sine squared x, 1 minus sine squared x, which makes this answer e. And then 540, if you subtract 360, I get 180. So that is 10, 180 minus x, that takes you to quadrant 2. 10 is negative, so it's negative 10 x, which makes the answer e. Okay. Shouldn't be that confusing. Simplify the following without these recalculate. So I expected you to have it written on the side the special angle. Okay. So 10 to 205, that takes you to all stations to claim on. That takes you to the third quadrant. So I say 10. 180 plus 45. No? Nope. That uh, 280, uh, 205 is not the special angle. So it's 25. As you can see, it's going to link up with that 10, 25. Times. Cos 315. So it's 360 minus. So it takes you to the third quadrant. So it's cos 360 minus 45. Times. Sine. That's in the second quadrant. Sine 180 minus 45. And this is over. I add 360 to that. I get 210 degrees. Not so. So I'll look it uh, into the third quadrant. You're going to say sine 180 plus 30 degrees. Give you 210 times cos 150. It's going to be 180 minus 30 degrees times 10 of 25. Okay. Now see some of you, quite a few of you, 
got to the point where you're taking, you know, the training wheels on the bicycle. You know what that is, no? Who have you ever, who have you ever ridden a bicycle? Oh, most of you. Just share. <laughs> but at least you got full marks. So there's something that you guys have done wrong. On the bicycle. On the bicycle. <laughs> okay. But importantly, these are our, our, our training wheels. Okay, this 180 plus, 360 minus, 180. So many of you that went straight into the sign, you missed it up. Many of you. Okay. So 180 plus, that's your third quadrant 10 is positive, so it's 10, 25 times. 360 minus, cos is positive, cos 45 times. Well, 180 minus, second quadrant, sign is positive, sign 45 over. 180 plus, fourth, uh, third quadrant, sign is negative, times. 180 minus, cos is negative, times, 10, 20. So what happens is that cancels. Negative times negative is positive. So the ultimate answer is, is going to be positive. That's over 1. So we need a 45 degree triangle. So it's 1, 1, root 2. And I need a 30 degree triangle. So I expected to have seen this people. OK? So as, um, cos 45 is 1 over root 2 times sine 45 is 1 over root 2, sine of 30 is 1 over 2, times root 3 over 2. Now, 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2 is 2, 1 over 2, not so, which now cancels with this half here. So in other words, I got 1 divided by root 3 over 2, which is the reciprocal, which is 2 over root 3. Okay. As you can see, no calculator was used there. Next question, prove the identity. So of course, left and right hand side story. We got left hand side equals. Now 10, we can be, re be written as sine squared x over cos squared x times cos squared x over 1, which is simply, it cancels, negative 1 over sine squared x. Now I could have said sine squared x is equal to 1 minus um, cos squared x and then take the buttons of two squares and swap it around and we'll get exactly what we have. Not so. Or we can work the right hand side as well. Which is 1 over. So what can be done here? It's conjugate pair, multiply the first and the last. So it's going to become cos squared x minus 1. If we swap this around, what's going to happen? A negative comes out. So it's going to be 1 minus cos squared x. And what's 1 minus cos squared x? Sine squared x. Not so, it's equal to the left hand side. And you see now what both sides. You see that people? So left hand side in simplest form is negative 1 over sine squared x, while the right hand side is the same. So therefore left hand side is equal to the right hand side. The last question. We couldn't have done this one here, 4.2 because you haven't done that work yet. I don't know why it's in the grade 11 paper. So that deals with grade 12, 3. I don't know why, why is it? Okay. That is why um, I marked you out to 24 and not 22. I'm 22, not 24. But for three marks, people, you must first say, okay, 10. So all stations to play one. That's 180 plus. Then 180 plus what? 180 plus 36. That takes you in the third quadrant. 10 is positive, so it's 10 36. So if you look at this diagram in question here, here's your 54 degrees. That is your angle of 36. Not so. 54, what does 10 stand for? Opposite over? The trace is my opposite. Yes? Oh, it's cos. Cos, cos, cos. I'm thinking of 10. So it's adjacent of hypotenuse. The adjacent is the root of 1 minus t squared 
the hypotenuse is 1. Now if you apply Pythagoras, you'll get T here. You will agree with that. And some of you didn't get T. Let me show you how to get T. 1 squared is equal to the root of 1 minus T squared, all squared plus your opposite side squared. So it's going to be 1 is equal to, that cancels, 1 minus T squared plus your opposite side squared. So your opposite side squared is equal to that cancel T squared. So your opposite is equal to the root thereof, which is T. That's how I get T. But what does tan stand for? Adjacent over hypotenuse for 36. Mm -hmm. So the adjacent is going to be T, your opposite over adjacent, so, which is the root of 1 minus T squared over. Okay. Any confusion there? What? 4.1, yes? You, you just want to tell me you got it. No. So I thought it was T over um, the square root of 1 minus T squared. That even was 10 of 58, yes. You know it will be T over 1 minus T squared. But, then. but since it's 36, I'm going to use the other angle and not uh, the one in the standard position. Okay. Any other confusion? Right. So prepare yourselves for the next test along. It's coming, same topic, okay. This intrigues are very weighty in paper two, no? it, um, it's a lot of marks in your grade 12 paper two. So don't let anything pass you and try and understand everything. Intrigue, okay. Then you went on uh, to homework yesterday. The homework was? I think you must start a question answering from question uh, from X 6.5, no? Is that correct? Yesterday we didn't get uh, to this point. So in 6.5, they asked to investigate the graph of y is equal to sine x plus p by developing a table for negative 360 to 360. Negative 360 to 360. Draw the corresponding graph in each of the axes. Right, so what I'm going to do is, you, uh, you guys have drawn this graph, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to draw it. Not because I'm lazy, no. It's because... Let's get to the right point here. Yeah. Where is that graph? So when we're drawing, we're drawing the x-axis from negative 365 to 370 it was, I think. Then we're going with units. Then let's go with 15 degrees, okay? So you can accommodate for everything. Okay? So it's 15 degrees. Then we said 15 degrees. A grid unit make it uh, 30 degrees. Otherwise our thing is going to be very busy. Your y-axis, let's go to minus 2 and 2. You make it 1 and 1. Grid, yes, settings, you're going to go with degrees. Alright. So which graph did they want you to draw first? It was a sine graph, not so. So you go sine x. Okay, we either want to from negative. Now you see it's going past 360 and negative 360. So we go from negative 360 to 360. You see the it stops there. Okay, and we should be doing the same. All right. Uh, edit, copy image, all right. So 
That's the graph we got. This is the y is equal to sine of x graph. Okay. From negative 360 to 360. But, however, they wanted us to investigate the graph of y is equal to sine x x plus 30 or 40. What was your first p-value? Do your graph use negative 60, 30 and 45 for 3 of the trial values of p in your investigation? So, so what you had to do is, the sounds of it, you guys didn't do it. Sad plus 60. That was the one. So let's change the color on this one. Then we can discuss what's actually happening here. Sorry? Minus 60. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about that afterwards. Is that okay? Okay. What color you want? Blue. Okay, nice. <laughs> So this is what the graph now looks like. So let's talk about this graph quickly. What do you notice? If we look, if we take the original graph, the original graph was this one here. From 360, maximum, down, minimum, maximum, minimum. And there we go, no? What do you notice? Remember, this graph is the sine of x graph, and the second graph that I've drawn is sine x plus 60. What do you notice? It's actually this graph here, which is the y is equal to sine x graph. What's happening to the graph? It shifts, yes. 60 degrees to the left. You can see it's exactly the same graph. Okay. Now you see that this part of the graph here, this part, it's actually if I extend this part of the graph here, that part will fall exactly onto it. And this part of the graph here, it's actually being cut off as this graph is moving that way. Remember they wanted only from negative 360 to 360. You guys understand? But remember, this graph also carries on all the way to infinity on that side, not so? And the graph is going all the way to infinity on that side as well. Okay. So what, what we notice is that the graph is shifting 60 degrees to the left. So right there. If you've got sine, x, um, sine of x, and we, and we drew the graph y is equal to sine uh, x plus 60, the graph shifts 60 degrees to the left. Can you see? x was, <coughs> the 60 was positive, and that is in the, the left is like in the negative direction. So the, if you're moving it along the x-axis, it will always be the additive inverse. So if you say plus 60, it moves 60 degrees back. So what do you think, what will happen if I had said minus 60? Move 60 degrees to the right. Let's check if that is the case. Okay. Let's put here, minus 60. Can you see the movement? I'll show you again. Can you see? There it was 60 degrees. Move the 60 degrees to the left. How do I go forward now? Put the minus 60. 60 degrees to the right. You guys see that? Right, let's just 
copy that put it in here you see this was the original graph in pink oops this was the original graph in pink and I'm trying to move on this graph no? stopping at uh, 360 so what do you need to notice the graph is moving 60 degrees to that Right. Can you see that people? Move 60 degrees forward. Okay. You can make that note there. For sine x, as it shifts to y is equal to uh, sine x minus 60, the graphs move 60 degrees to the right. We're looking at the 45 degree. Let's take that out now. Give this diagram there. So, what do you think? What will happen to the 30 degrees? Shift 30 degrees to the left. If it was minus 30 degrees, 30 degrees to the right. What if it was 45 degrees to the left? 45 degrees. If it was minus 45 to the right. And this is on the sine, cos, and the tan graph. Okay. You can make a note here. Um, in general, Explaining the effect of the variable uh, P as on the graph, so this is now the answer to C. Let's pull this here. We will find useful. Okay, so the graphical calculator we just used now, so you can make a note. If y is equal to a sine x plus P. If P is greater than zero, which means to say that it's positive, the graph shifts. P units, units to the, this is positive, the graph is going to move P units to the left. So if P is 10, it moves 10 degrees to the left. If P was 20, it moves 20 degrees to the left. Not so. And the quantity, if P is less than 0, which means to say P is negative, then the graph of sine or cos whatever then the graph shifts shifts p units to the right to the right which means to say if p is negative 10 it's going to move 10 degrees to the right if p is the um Negative 80, it moves 80 degrees to the right. Does it make sense, people? Right. This is on the sine and the cos graph and the tan graph. Sine, cos, and tan. Yes, Michael? So the tan graph has the asymptotes as well. The asymptotes should shift as well. You want me to show you how that works? Yes. All right, let's look at, she's asking with regards to the tan. So we're going to draw first the basic tan graph. Let's take this Mickey Mouse off. Well, let's just change it to 10. Okay, there's your asymptotes as you can see clearly. And let's make that 10 of x plus 30. Okay, let's take that one off first. Okay, there's our tan graph. Remember, where's your asymptotes? The asymptotes is here at negative 90. Normally a dotted line. Why a dotted line? Because it's an invisible line actually on the graph. Okay? So the graph comes close but doesn't touch that. Can you see that? So if we're going to say it's going to be tan x plus 30, then this graph is going to move 30 degrees to the left. Right, so let's take this graph here into account. Right. So what's 
you there, finish this graph, you're going to move 30 degrees to the left. There is the graph. So the asymptote also moves 30 degrees to the left. I'm, to the, I'm saying to the left, but I'm moving to the left. Sorry, man. Something wrong with me today? As usual. So let's move. So it's plus 30. So it moves 30 degrees to the left. Why are you laughing? What's wrong with you? What is it? Onelia is laughing. Okay. No, Onelia is one. Why are you laughing? Okay. But this graph actually moves 30 degrees, so it's going to go there. Which means just that the, SM, the, the X of symmetry will always also move 30 degrees over. Make sense? That's going to go to, this was at 90, so it goes to 60, and that goes over to uh, that 0 to 30. Okay, so if we do it from the, from the graph program itself, so let's make that visible. It's the graph in blue. You see here this line, the, 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 the graph is actually picking that line up there and is making it part of the calculation, of the sketch of the graph. But normally it's not part of the sketch, okay? I don't know, um, what's the name of it anyway now? Let's take it from can see here, I see that your asymptote of, of the original graph, let's use the rate for the original, was at 90 and 270. Uh, 270, yeah, negative 270, negative 90. Remember, we will be looking at the graph in pink, no? and 270. Can you see that, people? So what happens? If you say x uh, minus 30, move the graph itself moves 30 degrees to the left. So there, there we go, the graph moves exactly on that. What happens? The asymptote also moves 30 degrees to the left. So if I extend the range of this, or of what the graph is showing us, okay, and then you will actually see it better. Let me just extend that quickly. Instead of going to 2, um, let's make it your y-axis to negative 10 and 10. Right. Can you see now the effect of your asymptote is a bit better? Let's make it negative 15 and 15 on your y. Alright, I think that's a bit uh, better representation of actually what's happening there. Just uh, project this. Let's take this on. Alright, so what do you notice here? This asymptote, which was at negative 90. 270. Remember, this is a graph in pink, no? That we're looking at. 90, negative 90, negative 270. Okay. I could have just used the dotted line.
Can you see the graph comes close but never touches it? Can you see that people? So these are your asymptotes of the graph in the original graph in P. However, the graph shifted 30 degrees to the left. The left becomes asymptote. Whoops. The asymptote also moves 30 degrees to the left. Can you see the effect of this asymptote on this graph in blue? You guys understand? And there we go. Last one is at uh, 300. Okay, you guys understand? And that's the effect. The, the shifting I have, I have in the graph, so the asymptote also moves um, the same unit as the shifting of the graph is as well. Okay, now if it was minus 30, then the graph would have moved 30 degrees to the right, as well as the asymptotes would have also moved. 30 degrees to the right. Okay. Okay, is there any confusion there? Let's take this out here. That as well. Then you had to do um, exercise. Did we move on to. Did I give you more or more? Yes. Exercise. Six point six. I didn't. So uh, sorry. Oh, you had to summer. Nice. Okay. So let's go back here. We on which page are we on? Two hundred. Now, we, we just had this discussion now with regards to the shifting of the graph. So, did I ask you to do of number two? Huh? The first column. So, here you got y is equal to x plus 90, sine x plus 90. So, the sine graph, you drew that first, and you shifted 90 degrees to the left. Sine of x plus 30, what happens to that graph? It's 30 degrees. And move 30 degrees to the left. Uh, e, y is equal to sine x minus 90. So this is the sine graph moving 90 degrees to the right. Sine of x plus 15. It's going to be the normal sine graph, the basic sine graph moving 50 degrees to the left. And I, which is sine x plus 120, the graph moves simply 120 degrees to the left. Okay. So for tomorrow, I would like you guys to do out of exercise um, 6.5, you do the number 2, the second column. Okay. I also would like to, um, to draw your attention to I and, and H tomorrow. Remind me during that lesson that I'm going to show you some effect of, of what's happening there in terms of the graph and toe ratios that we showed you. Okay. But first draw it. Tomorrow we'll discuss that. Okay. So they had a discussion here on their own, right? Telling you the graph moves six degrees to the left. Then you went on uh, to sketching graphs horizontal shift. The horizontal shift means to say it's moving along the x, okay? And you have summarized this and I've explained to you all of this what's happening and I showed you on the program now. That was on page 202. Then you had went on to the horizontal shift of sine x plus p. That's what you had to summarize, okay? That's in order. That's in order. That's in order. There. Any confusion here? No. Then you have to do exercise 6.6. .6. Is that correct? No. no. Right. Your homework is exercise 6.6. .6. And there they just told you on page, um, on top of page uh, 205, they've also gave you that summary there. If P is greater than 0, we'll positive the graph moves P degrees to the left of the y axis. So they added the y axis there. And of course, if P is less than zero, which is negative, the graph moves P units to the right of the y-axis, okay? I would, I would like you guys to do exercise 6.6. .6. In exercise 6.6, .6, you do for me, number one, the first column.
You do for me the first column, and then you do for me number two. Okay. And then you do for me number three. Yeah, well work. Do for me number three. I'm going to do four now. And you and five um okay, you're gonna do numbers one to four. Okay, I'm gonna do number five on the board. Is that okay? Because number two th and three and four, you must draw the graph. Okay? Number five, the graph is drawn already. So, um, so it's uh, basically the same type of questions. No, no. I'm talking nonsense. I'm going to do number four on the board for you. Okay? You guys are going to do number five. Because a five is a bit different to number four and three. Okay? Is that fair? But tomorrow I will do it again with you guys. Okay? But you, you must do it. So that you can see what you understand and what your misunderstanding is. Okay. Yes. One, two, three, five. I'm gonna do four now. Okay. Oh, do you also want to do four? No. Oh. You don't want me to do four. How must I now feel? I'm gonna go home and then when I get home and then they're gonna scare at me because I'm gonna sit with my maths book because I didn't get enough maths at school that day. Yeah. That's what happens when I get down. In the scale, you're you in two maths the whole time. What's wrong with you? No? Do your parents feel the same? No. no. What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> you know, when I was younger, many years ago, no? Then, Every time my mommy used to see me sit with a maths book, then she used to make me coffee. So you know I liked coffee back then. You guys still like it, but she used to make me a decent cup of coffee every time. Yeah. So it gave me motivation for her to see every time you're sitting with my maths book. You understand? Because if I make me myself coffee, I must now use a half a cup of milk and you get the hiding and all of these things. But when she saw me sitting with the maths book, then she used to make me half a cup of milk coffee. It's good. Yeah, it's like a lot of milk, like it's nice. Yeah, so it gave me motivation to do more and more maths, you see? And yeah, I'm sitting today with you people. Huh? Right, let's do number four quickly. So at this point, I assume that you guys know how to draw these graphs, okay? So I'm not going to draw it with all the points and all that. I'm going to draw it from the program. This is exercise four po uh, six point six page two oh nine five. Right, exercise six point six two oh five. So we're drawing the graph cos of x and what? Oh yes, today is Tuesday. We're gonna have a register at the end of the day. Oh man. Right, we can do this tomorrow as well, okay. People enjoy the rest of your day. Good morning class.